Security is also getting a lot of attention in this release. JDK25 introduces post-quantum cryptography building blocks like the key derivation function API. How does Azul approach the shift towards quantum safe Java and what role do you see Java playing in securing enterprise applications in the post-quantum era? Yes, I mean, security is or should be always an absolute primary concern for anybody who's running IT systems. We only have to look at recent events that have happened, you know, in terms of certainly like I live in the UK. So you look at the attack that has taken place on people like Jaguar Land Rover, that's caused them to shut down their production for weeks on end, tens of millions of pounds in terms of cost. Uh, various other organizations here in the UK that have been attacked, data breaches and so on, and even supply chain attacks. Uh, if you look at things like the, the NPM attack that happened recently where people were injecting code into uh, libraries so they get pulled into an application automatically. Security should definitely be absolutely a, a priority for everybody. Um, when it comes to the sort of quantum cryptography and the post-quantum cryptography, post-quantum cryptography idea. Um, obviously, from a, an Azure perspective, we're definitely doing everything we can to support that in terms of the open JDK development and so on. And I think that this is, again, what we've seen over many decades, where it's a constant battle between the people who want to try and break into systems and the people who want to stop them from breaking into systems. And cryptography is one of those things that as computers become more powerful, it becomes easier to take on some of the algorithms that have been developed. So we can see that, you know, simple replacement algorithms, you can easily defeat those with with you know fairly basic computers so we start using more and more interesting and complex algorithms which are you know um, one way only so you can't reverse the algorithm and then you get into the idea of where you can use quantum quantum computing which essentially applies you know a whole lot of values to something in a single operation so massive parallelism which then breaks things in terms of the cryptography so we need ways of addressing that and that post quantum idea that's being included in java now is very much about addressing that and looking at how we can defeat the people but it's going to be a constant battle we'll we'll continue to look at you know ways to to defeat people and then we'll look at ways to find ways around that so it's it is an ongoing concern since we are talking about security, let's talk about observability as well. Observability continues to evolve with enhancement to JFR, including method timing, cooperative sampling, and CPU time profiling. How important is this level of visibility in cloud-native and AI-driven environments? And where do you see gaps that need to be filled for developers and operators? Again, you see, this is something that, that's a very much an ongoing process is looking at ways that we can increase observability. And with, the, again, the shift to the cloud, it's more important really now than ever, because if you think about the way that we deploy things in the cloud, we're using and taking advantage of, you know, the the way that we charge for things. So it's a, a usage-based charge model. The more you use, the more you pay, the less you use, the less you pay. That's great. But what you need to be able to do is identify where you're using resources and then look at how you can increase efficiency, because if you can increase efficiency, you can reduce your costs. So the, the utility-based pricing model is, is great, but we need to figure out how to reduce that. And that's where observability really comes in. It's finding all the places where you're actually using resources and then thinking, okay, can I reduce that resource utilization in different ways? So the observability is, is very important for that. What we're seeing more and more is that the tools like Java Flight Recorder and Mission Control are allowing us to get a more detailed picture of what's actually going on inside a Java application inside the JVM. And the, the way that we sort of get that information is it's a sort of double-edged sword in a way, because on the one hand, what you want is as much information as possible in order to determine where you've got bottlenecks, where you've got wasted resources. But of course, um, you know, we suffer from Heisenberg's uncertainty principle in terms of instrumentation and observability, because, you know, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is actually about quantum mechanics. Um, I did physics at university, and it's it's really the idea that when you observe something, you actually change what you're observing. And the same thing applies in computer software and instrumentation, because if you think about it, if you start instrumenting every method that you call and taking information when you enter the method and taking information when you exit the method, 
if you only do that for like one or two methods, it doesn't have a big impact on the performance of your application. If you do it for every single app method, then you actually distort the performance of your application. You slow it down by observing what it's doing. So then you get false result, results about the way the application is working. What we've seen with some of the changes in JDK 25 is the ability to very much sort of focus on a narrow set of information and say, okay, I want to look at things specific to method profiling, but only for certain methods. So we don't swamp the system and distort the results that we get. And that's a very powerful thing to be able to do. Certainly the other side of that is the tooling. So, you know, when we look at the data that we're collecting, great, we can collect lots of data about how an application is running, but it's then interpreting that and being able to say, right, how do we look at that information in a way that is useful and gives us data about where we're potentially got bottlenecks or wasted resources? So there are tools like Mission Control that do a much more graphical approach and say, okay, take that data, show graphs that indicate where object allocation is happening and so on. And at all, you know, we're doing a similar thing. We have a tool called ZVision, and that's targeted at our platform prime product, which is the high performance JVM. So we can collect more information about how our JVM works internally to allow us to tune that more to get better performance from it. 